Hello everyone and welcome to The Strange and Deadly Show. My name's Tom Elliott and we just wanted to put out a little quick episode just to let you know that we haven't gone anywhere. The Strange and Deadly Show hasn't faded away. We are carrying on. Unfortunately, Chris has some issues that he's taking care of at home at the moment, which has delayed things just for a little while. We hope it won't be for too long, but you know, you never know. So I hope you'll join me in sending your best wishes to Chris at this time. And, um, but in the meantime, like I said, I just, we just wanted to put out this little episode to let you know that we're still here. We're going to continue on that section three journey and we're going to finish that list. But in the meantime, I didn't just want to put out a quick file. I thought we will put a little something extra in there because in the last episode when we spoke about Zombie Holocaust, I alluded to an interview that I did with its star Ian McCulloch. Now, Ian McCulloch did three sort of uh, genre films, you know, the, the sort of band video nasty type films. He did obviously Zombie Flesh Eaters zombie holocaust that we spoke about last time and contamination so considering that he looms so large in our minds as a kind of star of these things he only did those three movies and we we touch on that in the interview now i do want to say i don't think it's my best interview ever you know it's okay but sometimes you're given like a 15 minute slot and it's like okay you got to do your best in that time Now this interview was done in 2012 and it was just after Arrow Video or just before actually Arrow Video were releasing the new Blu-ray of Zombie Flesh Eaters. Blue Underground had done their Blu-ray of Zombie Flesh Eaters, obviously called Zombie, in the US about a year before. Now Arrow were releasing theirs and this was part of their publicity for that release. Now what I find difficult sometimes is I got a review copy of that release and I watched all the special features and the commentaries and so on. Now the thing is, once you've immersed yourself in that for a while, they, especially a, a company like Arrow who put so much uh, extra stuff on there, Ian McCulloch told you know a load of stories on that release already so you're kind of like, well, what's left to ask him? You know, he's done these three movies. I also, when I'm interviewing someone, I like to have a mix between the obvious questions and the not so obvious questions because what you find is, you know, celebrities, actors and so on, when they're being interviewed will often drop into their go-to stories. If you you look around the web at interviews of the same actor, then you will see them tell the same stories over and over. And that's nothing against them because obviously they get asked the same or similar questions over and over. So I like to usually try and mix it with what are the stories that people are going to want to hear and what's a bit unusual, what have they not been asked about this thing, which I found quite difficult with Ian McCulloch because, one, he, he only really had these three movies, you know, in Italy. So they have been covered quite extensively. And also, I just watched that Arrow release with, you know, all this information on it anyway. So are we just going to go over the same thing as in the release? But, so, a bit of a difficult one. You know, not my best, but it's still Ian McCulloch and he still has some good stuff to say. He's, um, you know, this very well-mannered, polite English gentleman. He's a Scottish gentleman, actually. And he's... um, Always comes across as slightly bewildered to be part of this world, but he kind of embraces it anyway, which is a, something I quite enjoy about him. But anyway, here it is. This is my interview with Ian McCulloch, just as a little extra to say thank you for sticking with us. We will be back. I don't know when that'll be. If it's too long, maybe I'll drop in another little uh, interview or treat from the archives to keep you ticking over. But anyway, here's Ian McCulloch, and we will see you soon on The Stranger Deadly Show. Yes, no, you carry on. I'm I'm, I'm, uh, ready and prepared. (laughs) 
Good, good. Well, I, I understand you've got. Have you got a few of them lined up for today? Interviews and so on. Um, I think they said there were twenty-two or something. Oh my God, twenty-two. They seemed. Uh, Will seemed to say that they were sort of inundated with sort of phone calls and emails once they announced that it was sort of. Well, they were in charge of the PR for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I started a year ago because I mean it came out in America a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bill Lustig sort of set it up over there. That's right, the Blue Underground one, wasn't it? Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, they they have asked me to just talk about Zombie Flesh Eaters today, so I do yeah. apologise if we're you know skipping over a lot of the other stuff. No, you've done. no, you you are, you ask what you want, and I'll do my best to give you the right answer. Good, good, thank you. All right, well, I guess you know it, if perhaps you could just give us a bit of background as to your career leading up to Zombie Flesh Eaters, you know, getting into the business and so on. Uh, well, I went army. I was at Oxford, and then from Oxford I went to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after all, Shakespeare Company, I did lots of sort of theatre, lots of TV, some recording for Decca, folk singing, writing, whatever. Um, and it all uh, sort of reached a, a sort of peak with an episode of Colditz. Right. Um, and that episode of Colditz led to me doing a TV series called Survivor, BBC series called Survivor, the first series that is. Yeah. Not the latest one. Um, and then the success of that in Italy, I mean, it was a huge, huge hit in Italy, and it led to me being asked by Lucio Fulci if I'd like to be in Zombie Flesh Eaters. Yeah, yeah. That, that's it, sort of pricey of it. It is strange looking down your filmography because, you know, we have all this stuff in England and then we have these three films in Italy, don't we? Yeah, it came, it, it came totally out of the blue. I mean, totally unexpectedly. Um, I was rehearsing a play in Plymouth, uh, you know, miles from anywhere on rehearsal, money and uh, you know, not a nice time of year. Yeah. And I said, out of the blue, I got a phone call saying there was an Italian film company, uh, Variety Films. Would I play a leading part in a film? They didn't want to see me. They didn't want to audition me, test me. Or they just wanted me to say yes. So I, yeah. when they outlined the locations and all the rest of it, I, I mean, I said yes very well. Didn't even have to. I said yes very very quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I said I did. I did three on the trot. I'm virtually back to back. It's fair to say that you didn't quite know what you were getting yourself into with zombies. I had, yeah, you were absolutely. I had. I had no idea. I mean, I'd done a, a sort of a sort of Hammer House of Horror. Horror. I'd done the Ghoul, I think here, but they're done in a fairly sort of slow and stately fashion. And mm. uh, in a sudden, it was whisked off to in a New York, Caribbean, Rome, and all the rest of it with a big crew and, and, and sort of spending a reasonable amount of money on these things was, was, a, was a bit of a shock, yeah. I mean, Fulci himself, I, I've watched that Blue Underground disc and, uh, you, you know, you describe him as a bully and I, I was quite impressed with your honesty because a lot of people allude to that but they don't necessarily mention it. Can you elaborate on what kind of... Uh, well, and it, I have to sort of uh, augment that. I mean, it was, that was sort of just one sign of it. Yeah. But it wasn't until... Um, probably two years, I mean, I didn't see the film myself until two years ago, so I had no idea what it was actually like. Mm. And, uh, it, what, what was clear to me from seeing the film was that he was actually bloody good at his job. Yeah. And then I checked up on his career and I saw, you know, where he, where he trained, who he trained with, his body of work. I mean, he'd done masses and masses of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he, he was obviously successful and knew exactly, you know, what he was doing. Um, and I don't think I was really aware of that when I was doing it. Um, he, you know, he treated me and Richard Johnson, who were the two sort of, sort of, I'll say, stage actors, mm. uh, you know, proper professionals who were in it, with, with sort of total respect. But he, like a lot of directors, he has to have a sort of whipping boy or a whipping girl. Right. And in this case, he, I thought he was exceptionally unkind to the young Italian girl, beautiful Italian girl. But he, I mean, she wasn't an actress, and he asked an awful lot of her. Which I mean, she I mean, she eventually sort of did, and it, it may have been just his way of doing it. But because um, because some people do have to be bullied, I'm afraid to get the best out of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, he obviously thought that that was what he did. But as I said, you know, I I I found it really impossible to to sort of take him seriously because I mean, he really did to me. It looked just like Benny Hill, <laughs> and he was a, a well, he was very boastful about any sort of subject you brought up. He'd sort of done it, and he'd sailed the Atlantic. He was a he loved horses. He had horses. Um, so I, I because of the way he looked, and and I, I say I found it a little difficult to take him seriously, except when he was, you know, I thought, being a little unkind to. Um, the young lady. I've listened to that commentary where you see the, the film for the first time many yeah, years yeah. later. It's quite fascinating to hear your, your recollections on it. But just for anyone who hasn't heard that, I mean, 
what what was your reaction after all that time? Was it what you expected it to be? The, the first thing was that it, it was a lot better than I expected. I mean, I, I'm I'm afraid I'm not into the this uh, genre of, of, of films. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I I wouldn't go to see one of these films, um, or or any. I mean, or any of the sort of you know that sort of kind. They're, they're just not my cup of tea. Mm. But when I saw it, I just thought it was this has been beautifully put together. I mean that he he really had done a, I mean a wonderful job, Fuji. I thought the camera work and all the rest it just it just looked very, very good as if a lot of money had been spent on it. Mm. And uh, and it sort of worked. I mean it it worked thirty years ago and and I've just been to a convention in Florida and it's shown I mean it works there to this is a, you know, this is almost two or three generations on from when it first came out. So it has, I don't know what it is, but it has something very special about it. I mean, I don't think it's just the, you know, the, the two sort of iconic scenes, um, but it, it's got something very, very special about it, which sort of, you know, rings a bell in lots and lots of minds. And, yeah. and people are immense, I'm amazed, immensely fond of this film. You know, they don't, they don't, they're not frightened by it or all the rest of it, they're fond of it. They, you know, they, they have happy memories of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and do you spend much time going to the conventions and stuff? Um, I well, I went over to America last year. I did three just before the Blu-ray came out over there. Right. So it came out a year ago over there, and that had uh, I don't know. You've got a copy. That's got sort of di- di- quite different sort of editions and and yeah. interviews and all the rest of it. Um, so I went over to sort of publicise that, hoping that it was going to coincide with the launch. But in fact, I did three conventions and then it was launched. Mm. Um, but I said I did I did sort of Boston, Seattle, and um, uh, the, the Chile, Chile, and New Jersey, right. um, in sort of quick succession. I mean, one 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 a week, and uh, and then I did sort of one. I went to Birmingham for the Chapel what, memorabilia, is it? Yeah, or yeah. They have there, um, and and I say I've just come back from Florida a couple of weeks ago. Did that affection that people have for you did that surprise you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that they've got an affection for me. I mean, it's, it's the film rather than me. I mean, the other stuff people may remember me in a slightly kinder sort of fashion, but um, no, I just think that you know I'm the guy um, who you know, was the journalist who did this, that, and the other. But um, I, I don't. I personally sort of feature very large, and it's, it's, it's the film. It's the it's, it's the it's the whole piece. Yeah. You know, they don't single out any, anybody. Uh-huh. And in fact, if I'm honest, the most popular person at these is is uh, um, Ottaviano Dallacqua, who who plays the zombie. Yeah. You know, who is obviously totally unrecognisable in real life. I mean, he's a nice, sort of good-looking chap, um, mm-hmm. um, and multi sort of talented, but. Uh, as in most of these conventions, it's the people who, which, which is a big surprise, to me, is, it's the people who wear the mask and are behind all the makeup who seem to be the most popular. <laughs> you did say that when you were filming, um, you you regret not being perhaps uh, taken up the opportunities to be more social with the cast and so on. Yeah. Is, is that yeah. because the, your character's traits kind of uh, were informing the way you acted on set and that kind of thing? Uh, well, I th- I think basically I was, uh, you know, I, I'd done the army, I'd done Oxford, I'd done the RSC. I think I was probably fairly sort of stiff, and um, I just was, in all honesty, just rather unsure of uh, what I was going to be doing in the film, how I was going to be doing it, and how I sort of fitted into the sort of film sort of scenery. Because I, 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 I mean, I'd done the ghoul and something else, but I hadn't really been involved in this way before. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would say I was in a foreign country, and Richard Johnson was the only, well, and the part from Teaser was the only other sort of Brit around. Mm. Um, so I, I say I just didn't know what to expect, and I think I probably just stood back uh, a little bit, maybe more out of fear than anything else, because of, um, I mean, not not, <laughs> not fear of being hurt in any way, but fear of sort of you know not doing the right, not doing the right thing. Yeah. So I was just uh, in a, a little bit lost, a little bit unsure. Yeah. Uh, and then I said, by the time I did the second film, that, you know, it, I sort of more or less knew what was expected, what to do, how I could enjoy myself. Good. Um, and from then on, it was just a piece of cake. Can we talk about some of the people you worked with on the film? Um, yeah. People like Al Cliver, uh, yeah. you know, maybe just some thoughts and recollections about working with them, that kind of thing. Uh, what was Al like? Well, if we sort of go back to you know, where your sort of last question was, I mean, yeah. I 
we sort of did our work together, but we didn't we didn't sort of socialise. I mean, mm. uh, Al was very much a sort of party animal, I and mean, well, m- most of the crew were. <laughs> <laughs> I say apart from this sort of well, I'm Scottish, but sort of English sort of uh, yeah. sitting back and uh, and just sort of watching what everyone else is doing. Um, so I've only sort of come to know Al since. Um, that and um, because he comes to most of the conventions, we go as a set of four. That's uh, Al, Richard Johnson, um, Ottaviana, and myself mm. we usually go. Um, and since that, I mean, I've, we've become good friends. I mean, he lives in in Bali yeah. most of the time. Um, and again, he's uh, you know he's to me you know, he's just someone. Who, I don't think he does stage work. I mean, he was just someone who sort of was good looking, had a you know fine physique, mm-hmm. a nice sort of personality, and was just working again almost nonstop in Italian films and doing you know anything and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, uh, you know, he 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 was an old, probably the same age as me. But he he was an old hand, you know, very assured of himself and what he sort of did in the film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, what what was sort of nice about it was. Is, is that they are all really, really, you know, nice people, and uh, and and it's great for when we do meet up again, and, and we all have great fun. Yeah, um, and I take it that's Richard as well. Yeah, yeah. No, Richard. I mean, I think I've said before. I mean, I was a fan of Richard when I joined the Royal Shakespeare Company. Yeah. Uh, Richard was one of its big stars, and to have my name on the same you know, list, uh, list of the Royal Shakespeare Associated Artists or whatever, uh, with him and Judy Dench and all was was you know straight out of university was wonderful. But he and he, I've always been a fan of his. I think he is a fantastic actor. Mm-hmm. And as a young man, I suppose he's about ten years older than me. He was uh, he had a you know wonderful stage presence, wonderful face, great voice. Um, and just acted the pants off to sort of people around him. And I, to me, he, I thought more of him than, you know, his contemporaries, you know, whether they were sort of Burt No Tools and Stanley Bakers and people like that. Yeah. I, I, I think he had an immense acting talent and ability. Obviously, the film came out, and then there was the controversy in England at the time, the Video Nasties yeah. era. Yeah. Uh, what, what were your thoughts at that time? Well, the film came out, and it was a bit of a, I think, you know, it was a bit of a damp squib. I mean, my wife went to see it with a group of friends, and she, she left after five minutes, <laughs> and has never, never seen it since. Um, but uh, so, I mean, it, it sort of came out. People said things about it, and that was that. And then it, it wasn't until they say it was put on that list of video nasties that uh, it, it, it suddenly achieved the sort of you know notoriety and and, and eventually a sort of an, an, an iconic sort of mm. life of its own. Um, I mean, of which I was you know totally totally surprised. Um, and really unaware until whatever it was two years ago. You know, I was I was asked this and if I'd like to go to America for these conventions because you know people wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and and still you know wanted to see it. And and it's you know as you are aware, it's, it came it, you know, it was came out on you know tapes, DVDs, compilations, um, and then updated after 25 years. Now we've got the Blu-ray coming out next month mm-hmm. um you know, and someone will probably make a 3d version of it you know, somehow yeah, yeah yeah um so i say it, it wasn't until that that it was banned and it's say i was you probably know the story but i mean three of the films i did were banned mm. that was the three italian films zombie contamination and zombie holocaust yeah um, and again, it's, it's a silly part of the story, but my wife's uncle actually sat on the committee that banned them. I mean, that, that's a true story. <laughs> I bet that was awkward, the family events. <laughs> no, no, it was. It was, it was just him. I mean, he, uh, he was a fairly sort of straight-laced character, yeah. um, and uh, he sat in the House of Lords, and he was asked to sit on this committee. And um, I say, when I... He, uh, what, do you know the story? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so, well, I, mean, I met him, him in the street, and he just said, you know, he, he didn't know happy, so I said, what are you doing, Martin? And he said, well, I've got to see these horrible films. And I said, oh, well, you'll see me, I'm in three of them. <laughs> and and, and his, his exact words, I mean, I've quoted it often, was, you know, Ian, how could you? <laughs> how could you? It does make for a good story, though. Well, I mean, I, I, I say, that was that was what sort of set it on its way. Yeah. And I've met people at conventions who were prosecuted for selling it. Oh, right. Um, Birmingham last year, the year before. I met one who I think was fined, I think he said. And the other, who, uh, if it's true or not, it was a bit more interesting. He said that the judge um, insisted on seeing the film. Right. And then said that he didn't think that it was, uh, you know, 
nasty enough to find them, so it didn't. Oh, well, does some sense prevail then that occasionally? Uh, well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I saw Contamination recently. I think that's a, a fun <laughs> movie. Um, uh, I again, that's a film. I mean, I've, I, I, I have derided it ever since I made it because the script, the script, in all honesty, was awful, <laughs> um, and some of the effects, as you are aware of, are pretty feeble. Uh, but I, I like it. I mean, I, I saw it in, in the first time in Dublin, I think, last year or the year before, and uh, I, I thought it was all right. I thought it was again, it looked fantastic. Yeah. You know, it, uh, the photography and all the rest of it was, was sort of good, but it was, uh, um, yeah, just a bit of a silly film, I think. Well, that's it. it it's a lot of fun. Uh, the, the scene that always stands out to me is the, the one where you slap uh, Louise Marlowe's character. It's just something you would never see in a film these days, isn't it? Uh, well, you'd probably get in trouble for doing yeah. that uh, quite early on. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you made these three films, and, you know, the zombie flesh eaters kind of put revived Fulci's career and so on. Did Were the Italians trying to uh, get you to make more films after these? Uh, no, I did I did the third film, the, which was Contamination, and I remember I went out to supper with my agent and friends in Rome, and I said, you know, I think this is the last film I'm going to make in Italy. Right. And they said, no, 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 because there's an Argento film that uh, you're lined up for. Um, I have no idea what it was. And I just said, well, I just sort of seen in my bones, and that's it. And... Uh, I mean, that was it. Just as quickly as it started, it sort of finished. Um, I never, I'm, well, I've been out there for, I went out for holidays and I went there for my honeymoon and things. But, um, no, it just, it just sort of stopped. And, um, the parts I played were sort of taken over by David Warbeck. Yeah. Um, he sort of came in and, and seemed to do all those. And he, you know, he was a lovely bloke, a nice, uh, you know, friendly bloke, good, good actor. Camera loved him. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was that. It was rather sad. I mean, because I, you know, love every minute of it. I mean, you're, you know, you're treated like a prince when you go over there. And, uh, and I love it anyway. But. All right. Well, uh, Ian, I think we've got enough for, uh, for an article okay. there. I, uh, thanks very much for your time. I, um... Okay. Well, let's say if you've got any problems or you want to catch up on anything else, just, just give a ring. Brilliant. Thank you. I, uh, I hope hope the rest of the interviews aren't too repetitive for you. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. I hope it comes out okay. Will do. Thanks, Ian. Right, okay. Thanks for ringing. Cheers. Bye. Okay. Bye. been listening to the strange and deadly show brought to you by gentlemen's grindhouse records with me chris clayton and tom elliott thank you to danny davis for the music and to dark ink one for the artwork you can visit our website at gentlemen's grindhouserecords.com